Candace came over today because we are going to do Hollywood Review Show. She knows the founder, Tony Boldy, and his co-host is R.C. Everback. They were kind enough to invite us to talk a little bit about Viva Glam, what do we do, and, you know, just cross-promote. So I'm kind of excited to see what these two dudes have to say. It was fun, but it was freezing. I was just telling Asi it was cold. Candace wasn't at the photo shoot in Marina, so I was just filling her in, you know, how we all got sick. And I think overall it turned out really well. I was about to say, did anybody get sick then? We all got kind of motion sick. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a smooth photo shoot. Candace is really cute. She loves watching me doing my hair and makeup. And I mean, I kind of like and appreciate that experience with her. It's such a intimate moment as two friends which you know you don't have with too many people because people are so busy on their cell phones these days and you know including me when Candace comes over and when I'm getting ready and we just have that moment of her and I talking I don't know if she knows how much I really enjoy it and, and appreciate it because it just makes me feel like the world stops and nothing really else matters just just the friendship that we have I think you should uh, put a little pop of color okay. on your lips because I think you're going to be washed out on camera at the interview okay. and has sparkle. Oh, thank you. I love the fact that the Hollywood Review is just like 10 minutes from my place where I live and where I work. So it's right on Hollywood Boulevard, you know, you just get off one exit and you're right there. So why not, right? I'm so busy, but anything to promote Viva Glam, I'm in. I'll let it time. Yeah, let's just go. Okay, okay. Oh, it's perfect. I just need to put some clothes on. So we drove into Hollywood and uh, went to the studio. Me and RC? Uh, yeah, Tony and RC. And we went to do the Tony Boldy show. RC Cola. Yeah. Do I need to say RC Cola? Or no, do I was going to think that it's oh. crazy. <laughs> That's the only thing I do so I can remember oh, what I see. it is. So yeah, he's, yeah, he's going to think we're nuts. 15 For 15 minutes, minutes Also, that's like an hour? Yeah has like a very, very small break in between. Real quickly, they'll talk about, you know, what is gonna be the next segment, what are you gonna say in the next segment, and then we go right into it. There's okay. no time to leave the room, so don't don't expect that. After we parked, we ran into RC right in the parking lot. Hi. How are you? Good to see you, you know, Pat? Hey. How are you? Glad to be back. Amen, glad to have you guys. That was the first time I actually met him, and he's really cool, right? So I'm thinking this is gonna be a piece of cake. I love when people hit it off. It just makes things so much easier. RC is this charming guy. He looks like he stepped out of the silver screen back in the 50s. Got that very Hollywood, you know, classic look. And he's just fun to be around. When we came to the actual studio, uh, I got to meet Tony. Uh, Get me with my glasses on, are you? <laughs> here at WCOBF.com, we're here with the lovely ladies of Viva Glam Magazine. Get ready to do a live show in the studio here in about 10 minutes. So if you guys want to log into the archive, you just go to WCOBM.com. My name's Tony Boldy. Our C and I are the hosts of a show called The Hollywood Review. We're live on Hollywood and Vine. Keep watching. We're having fun. I hope you are as well. That's great. Damn, he's I'm glad somebody has a bunch of notes. A very nice man, fun, but very very business oriented. So I think they complement each other very well. Come in. So what we're going to do is we're going to have, you're going to be here. Me? And yes, and you're going to be there. And RC's going to be there. And we're going to grab the throne. I'm here. Hi. Yes, you're here. Is that amazing? Okay, great. Okay. Okay. 20 seconds. Okay. Here we go. Um, How to do it. You're going warm back here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just go bubble up. Bubble up. Bubble up. Bubble up. Bubble up. And stretch them off. Here we go. Okay, good. You guys ready? Mm -hmm. You're going to have some fun. Seconds. Hello and welcome to the Hollywood Review with Tony Boldy and RC Everbeck. We have some beautiful guests today. Very and not beautiful. are they just beautiful, they're very smart and they are business owners and they run a wonderful magazine called Viva Glam Magazine. But we're going to get into that in just a minute. Now, do models talk? We don't know. We'll find out. Mm. Is, that P is that PC? <laughs> Was that politically correct, RC? Well, coming, you know, since I'm qualified, I mean, well, you a model? my history, no. I, I was a casting director, so music, 750 music videos and commercials. Yeah. I, mean, I saw the best looking women in the world on a daily basis, and I'll tell you what, the thing that set people apart was uh, some of them came in and all they had was their looks. Right. And 
believe it or not, that gets old. And to your left, one of your best friends, but a my, hard, my, hard worker. My right hand, yes. yes. Oh, aha, I should introduce myself. I'm Candice Kita, and uh, yes, I work for Viva Glam Magazine, and I actually love my job. Mm -hmm. Candice has that fun job, because she gets to travel with us, all these I fancy do. schmancy yeah. places, mm -hmm. and write about it, and just enjoy the luxurious places and massages, and, and, and she has to review all that. On the print issues, um, I usually do the longer, more involved articles. We review the town itself, but then we also review the hotel or the luxury amenities that we stayed at. We review the restaurants, the food, the accommodations, spas, exercise. I mean, we kind of do this huge, big article, which I think people really appreciate because I think in the hard copy, People like to, to dream and manifest, and they are inspired by the travel. This shit tough life. Uh, Candace and I told them in advance that we are going to be shooting for our docu-series, but you know, people don't really realize it till they actually see an extra person running around following us with the camera. So they're like, what is this about? And I'm like, we're here shooting for a docu-series and your face will be on it. Candace. Well, definitely, I think we wanted to talk about what she was talking about earlier, which is uh, our docu-series that we're actually taping right now, um, because we wanted to show everybody really what our lives are like. Like most reality shows, I think a lot of it is, is fake or it's, it's put together. This is really our every single day to the point where we kind of forget the camera is there and it, it's seamless. And I really think that people are going to be interested in the Viva Glam lifestyle. So at some point during the show, uh, Tony and RCC, Caitlin, who's been shooting everything, and you know, Caitlin is this 4'11 tall girl. She's really cute. But she's doing work like three dudes that are six feet tall. And you can't see this here, but in the corner we are being taped. Uh, Caitlin Kazepis is, uh, and we'll bring her out. But actually, oh, yeah, yeah. Come on out. Come on out. There you go. No, leave the ponytail. <laughs> That's good. Oh, I know. No time to fix it up. <laughs> Tony and RC go like, who is this girl? Let, let's just meet her. Uh, so hey. since we've been walking in the door, um, Caitlin has been uh, filming us like from the car. Like, so you feel I like figure, a star? Yeah. Well, no, because like I'm not ready. And my vest isn't on. These girls are like doing that's, this, and she's like rolling. That's standard <laughs> practice for you guys, right? Yep. Yep. So exactly. you, you get no no reprieve, no quarter uh, to fix your due before you come on camera. Well, they saw Caitlin working so hard, walking around, you know, standing on one foot with one camera in the right hand, another camera in the other hand, going outside on the street, shooting through the window. And they're like, you know what, this, this chick is really cool. Not even our people do that. And I love that. I love the fact they included her. Like, I like when people acknowledge the production people because lots of times they make him feel like they don't matter. I've been there, I've done it. So I just always pay attention to how people treat or artists or talents treat production people. We'll see um, on VivaGlamMagazine.com uh some of these interviews mm -hmm. and uh her cut up segments so we'll see how that goes and we're always looking for good editors yeah eric also oh, you're not taking town, my girl so, you know, you're not might. taking my girl yeah. <laughs> you know being on both sides of camera i've experienced when i wasn't treated with respect because i was just a makeup artist right here's the reflector hold it like i'm not the reflector holder you know, I'm a makeup artist. I always pay attention to the production people. Even when I was a talent as an actress on set, I always remember making friends with the grip guys, sound guys, camera, with catering or, or anybody, and just always make sure like I talk to them and, and I'm nice and kind and show interest in their lives too, because I'm not the only one that matters on set. Everybody has such an important role and um, is needed, obviously, otherwise wouldn't be there, right? So without a great director and camera girl who is our Caitlin, none of this would be possible.
basically we're trying to document our lives, everyone mm -hmm. who's involved with Viva right. Glam magazine, because I think we're such an amazing team, and I think the team deserves a shout out, um, mm -hmm. you know, and people need to get to know us who's behind the Glamorous magazine, because it's lots of hard work. Talk about the, glam li the glamorous life of a model or of a person in this industry, you know, it's, it's appropriate to see what the behind the scenes are, because, you know, especially with your magazine, they, you get into it. So I found out that if you do your curls, right, you don't want to pull out the bottom piece on the tendrils. If you <laughs> if you pull them, you lose the bouncy, it's called bouncy hair, and it's a great little you segment. Know, so. RC hair. Yeah. RC always does this research, but I think a little more research for this episode. What do you think? Or a different research. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Over and over and over again. This is how interactive this show is. It's live. So we're, we're really live. excited. You guys are watching WCOBM. This is World Center Broadcast Media's the version called The Hollywood Review. Every time I get an opportunity to promote plant-based diet or plant-based lifestyle in general, I'm happy to do so because I'm a strong believer in plant-based lifestyle. I think everything is energy and I know some people might not get the concept because of their upbringing or their religious beliefs, but you know, I do think that living a plant-based lifestyle is more peaceful, it's more beautiful uh, and has better karma in general. So I appreciate when people like Tony and RC let me talk about it a little bit and I like to spread the awareness. I've been a vegan for 22 years. What do you actually put eat on your plate? Plant-based diet. Because I believe if you eat plants that are filled with sunlight, oxygen, chlorophyll, and all the good stuff that's out there, you become that. You are what you eat. We talked about Viva Glam magazine, we talk about plant-based lifestyle, we talk about my movie Unbelievable with five exclamation marks. Both of you have uh, movies coming out. Ah, yeah. I don't want to miss that. Yeah. Oh, let's We're in so one, so yours is... Well, I did a movie. Um, it's not out yet, but it's going to be out. It's called A Week in London, and uh, I play basically the girl that everybody loves to hate. Um, and then I also did another one that's Power Ranger movie, and I get to Speaking play <laughs> the Yellow Power Ranger. And I'm so excited because the original Yellow Power Ranger, a woman named Tweetron, who I knew, mm -hmm. uh, I'm so thankful that I get to actually do that role as well. It's an, it's an honor for me. Unbelievable with five exclamation points. I play one of the lead actresses. Uh, my name is Cheryl and I'm a wife of a puppet. So if you enjoy movies such as Plane or Spaceballs, I think you're gonna really enjoy you're it. Unbelievable. It's a sci-fi parody. Trekkie fans will like that. Trekkie fans for sure. And I walk around in white bikini. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> Yeah, you guys don't want to watch. I'll yeah. find Captain Kirk in a playmate. Right you are, yeah. aren't you? Oh, I can totally see you as Captain Kirk. That's my husband on the, in the movie. Boom. There you go. Except he's a puppet. You're unbelievable. We've been in LA for 20 years. We wake up happy and we are, we're appreciative of being in LA. We don't complain. Where are you from originally? Not I'm from the former Czechoslovakia, which is now Slovakia, okay, part of it. And, and you call yourself a Slovak American. During the show, I actually realized uh, it's my ninth year anniversary of becoming a naturalized US citizen. Is that yes, because I today, actually, today exactly is uh, nine years of me being a US citizen. Oh, congratulations. Yes. 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 That's a big deal. Yeah. Being a US citizen is an honor and it's really a privilege. Not too many people get to be uh, naturalized citizens. And because I was that generation of the 90s immigrants, you know, my journey was very difficult and hard. And the toughest part was the day I was actually doing the interview for becoming a U.S. citizen. The interview and the test, which I was prepared for very well. But the gentleman who was interviewing me was someone who was already retired and he was asked to fill in for somebody who wasn't available that day. And this gentleman who was in his 70s is a generation of the Americans who were really anti-Eastern Europe. Our obligations of citizenship. Number one, to understand the American way of life and what makes it tick. Number two, to understand communism. Anti-communism. It's basic godless philosophy. Number three, anti-socialism. To understand socialism and all the cunning disguises in which it presents itself to the American people. To understand propaganda techniques as used by both the communists and the socialists. This is a very vitally important need. So him looking at me was, I felt like he's projecting his anger and his hate towards those people and those countries and the system, and he's projecting it onto me. 
just because I had so many stamps in my passport because I travel a lot. I mean, I've been traveling all my life. Because I had that, he was questioning what I do in America and he was trying to convince me that I am, you know, doing something I'm not in this country. My friends, I'm just an average American. But I'm an American American. And some of the things I see in this country of ours make my blood boil. I don't know what exactly it was because after he called the manager uh, and he showed him the books with laws or I don't know, something like that, and he was trying to convince him this is what he believes I am. I don't know what it was because I never seen it, but it was something really horrible. Uh, just because when I saw the reaction of the manager when he saw it, it was like, ooh, like, it, like he couldn't believe like I would be that. I've heard this kind of talk before, but I never expected to hear it in America. You know, I just tried to tell the manager, I'm like, sir, I work three jobs. The gentleman who was interviewing me didn't believe I made only $45,000 a year with all those stamps in the passport. I get to travel as a model. Lots of times it's not a paid job because you get to travel. Lots of times it is a paid job. And it's the truth, nothing but the truth. Let us not assassinate this lad first, Senator. Look, look, look. You've done enough. Have you no sense of decency, sir? I had nothing to hide. I went to Columbia, host a nightclub, you know, did autograph signing, and I came back. It was also very suspicious to him why I have a website. Everybody these days have a website. Don't tell me, like, how much you charge for your website. I'm like, I don't charge for my website. It's just a portfolio. You and everyone else talk so much about laying the truth upon the table. He didn't believe it. He's like, don't tell me you would have a website when you're not making money of it. And you could tell this gentleman really wasn't caught up on all the technology and what's going on in the world. Basically drilling me, you know, and, and insulting me. It was just very, very difficult to embrace that moment because I came with such enthusiasm there and I was so happy and proud because I knew how hard I worked. Anyone who does not share his hysterical disregard for decency and human dignity and the rights guaranteed by the Constitution must be either a communist or a fellow traveler. All I could think of was how many houses I had to clean to make my honest living, I make six dollars an hour, how many flyers I had to pass out, how much ice cream I had to sell to make that ten dollars an hour, how many times I almost got poisoned from inhaling bleach from scrubbing floors and bathrooms in people's homes. And I chose to work very hard for very little money because I felt I'm not gonna regret it one day. I felt like I'll be proud if I took the easy route and, you know, got some rich man or a guy who could support me, which obviously I had those opportunities in Hollywood. You know, I didn't feel that's gonna make me happy and I didn't think it's the right thing to do. I felt that's exactly what I would regret one day and I would hate myself for it, for selling myself short, for selling my body to a devil. So I always chose to work very hard, little jobs, whatever I could at that time, being an immigrant in this country. So then you have this guy who's trying to convince you you're something. Anyone who criticizes or opposes McCarthy's methods must be a communist. And if that be true, there are an awful lot of communists in this country. I am the one who's living the dream. I am the one who had balls to leave my nest and, and comfort and just start from zero literally from the floor by cleaning floors in this country. What has he done? What has he done? You know, how many languages does he speak? I, I just felt humiliated because he really didn't want to give me the citizenship. He has traveled far, interviewed many, terrorized some. We proclaim ourselves as indeed we are, the defenders of freedom wherever it continues to exist in the world. Fortunately, the really nice manager that was on duty that day, he could probably read people pretty well and he knew you know none of that is in me and he probably figured I was very sincere about everything but we cannot defend freedom abroad by deserting it at home so I passed the gentleman who interviewed me wouldn't even say bye wouldn't even say congratulations normally when you finish your interview when you're becoming a US citizen they uh, give you a handshake you know and they say congratulations I didn't get any of it 
I was treated like a piece of shit. And it's just not fair because I had one opportunity, one chance to become a US citizen and he ruined it for me. Sometimes you have to fight really hard for what you want in life and sometimes the journey can be discouraging. You'll run into so many obstacles and, and you know, we all have a story. It's not just mine, but my story is mine and yours is yours. If you want something really badly, you'll have it and, and I've always believed in it. Was it all worth it? Yes, it was. The great feeling of sympathy, understanding, and generosity toward our fellow man that is America and the determination to work and fight for this ideal will keep America a bulwark of freedom for the peoples in all parts of the world. Again, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching.